uh, bear with me till uh, 12.30, 12.30 or 12.45. Let us see how long the things take place and then we can start off from tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I need to share it. Okay. Thank you. Now, um, for all of you, yesterday I had completed with Coons also. And I said that today I'll be starting off with a new thing. And as promised, yes, it would be a new thing. This I have done. <clears throat> All of you have understood what exactly Popper wants to say. And basically, um, even Kuhn. And we have understood a little bit about it. Now, given that scenario and the eight or 12 dichotomies that I have done, Research philosophies, there are certain terminologies or the technical terms that you need to understand. I'm not introducing the schools as of now. That I would be doing it once I complete these things right away. And then we will understand as to, uh, you know, what kind of subjects are there, number one. Definitions for some of them, I'm giving it to you. And then what are the problem areas? You know, how to use these words into our own uh, research and try to understand how to carry forward. For example, the words like metaphysics, axiology, logic, aesthetics, epistemology, ethics, social and political philosophy. So, you know, when we are talking about the reality, one has to understand how to go ahead and raise certain problems for ourselves so that we know, you know, what kind of questions we are raising for. So here comes in the various branches which are there in terms of which you are going to classify your questions. For example, social political philosophy, I will be explaining each one of these things today so that you are aware of it. Similarly, what is metaphysics? What is ontology? What is epistemology? Why aesthetics? What, what is the need for ethics? Cosmology, that realism that we talk so much about it, what exactly it is, that induction, logic, deduction, and theology. You know, ultimately, the ultimate reality that we are talking about is somehow given away and given the title as God. And we say that, yes, this is the one that we are talking about. However, is it the God itself or the God itself has become an object for us and there is something beyond the concept of God also? Are the things that we will be studying, um, I mean, uh, if you are looking into it, you can have a look under the theological study. Now, the first um, topic Usually, when we are writing the research papers or the uh, theses or whatever we want to research, talks about the metaphysical problem. So what is this metaphysical problem that we are talking about? What is this subject? <clears throat> so this is for the scholars that one has to <clears throat> understand that the word metaphysics means something which is beyond physics. So what do we do in physics, basically? We are studying about the matter. <clears throat> if it is a matter, how do you define matter? Matter is something that occupies space, exists in the time, and has some kind of a mass. So we are not interested with the mass as of now. What we are more interested in is what kind of space and time are we talking about. So here, metaphysics as a study constitutes the investigation of the nature, structure, and value of reality. If this is so, this is the definition that we are talking about. And here also, you will be seeing that metaphysics is sometimes, you know, when you go beyond it to study more and more, you will see that we are talking about ontology, we are talking about natural theology, and what you call it as a universal science. So, so can there be a universal science that can be present? And that's what we need to understand and proceed further. And what are the various problems here? The basic question about the ultimate substance is how many substances are required 
to constitute this world in the sense if world is my objective reality which is existing they are asking you how many substances are required to understand this world itself so here we will see certain schools coming in like dualism which says that world exist in dualities that means if there is subject there is what you call it as object if there is whole then there is part if there is deduction there is induction on this side if there is uh, what you call it as a priori on one side on the other side we have got a posteriori so if on one side we have mind on the other side we have got brain so you know these are the things that dualists are talking about and you will see a lot of schools which fall under the category of dualism today in the morning when i <clears throat> shared that particular um, folder which consists of the branches i was trying to send you the pages wherein you are able to understand what are the various schools and how they are coming in today after this session i would be passing on some more links some more books so you will be seeing more of these kind of things coming into your picture so what i have done i have gone ahead and i'm introducing what is monoism dualism they say two things are there monoism goes exactly opposite to that and they say that no there are no dichotomies in this world there is only single reality simple it is mono that means single one simple as simple as that we don't have to whether you give the name of god or you give the name of e equals to mc square or you say it is final ultimate consciousness or ultimate awareness choice is yours what name we want to give however they say that remember that in the end there is only one reality and we don't have to divide and see the dichotomy materialism says the entire world or even the universe that we are talking about is made up of materialism including the fact that they will not believe in the existence of mind soul all those things they will say that it is only materialism that means atoms and you will see there are so many schools which are talking about atoms molecules then uh, categories of the substances how they are being formed all those things are being coming under the category of materialism same is the case with the spiritualism in spiritualism you can call this school as immaterialism which says no 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 there is nothing called as materialism we have got more of the immaterial stuff like spirits souls atma they will be talking in those terminologies and we will have to understand tomorrow i will be discussing only about these schools individually not just this form there are so many schools and we will be uh, going ahead and understanding as to what these schools are similarly pluralist what do they do they say ki no dualism no monism no materialism as far as you can see that there are different different subjects existing in this world you will see that the reality is never ever or one school says they are not same other school says no subjects are different we can understand however the objective reality is same for our everybody now in other school they say ki no this subject will be having a different object other ob subject will be there seeing a different object the other one will be seeing it in a different manner therefore we have got what you call it as pluralism so we need to understand about it also now when we talk about epistemology this is other school that we are talking about what is that it is nothing but something through which you are able to gain the knowledge about something for example they are talking i mean there are a lot of epistemologists are there now some of the popular ones are like descartes kant of course yes i was talking about kant right from the beginning and hume also so here you will see the problems of epistemology which you are able to find out are number 1 what is the nature of knowledge for example 
if a company is there what kind of knowledge can i gain about this company and if i have to gain the knowledge what is that process of the knowledge that's what they are looking for so what are the various sources of knowledge also like here now westerners would say the western part there are rationalist empiricism intuitionism positivism logical positivism interpretivism etc 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 i don't know how many isms are there till date in, in our studies only okay now apart from that the eastern schools of thought that i'm talking about they don't regard these things to be as the sources of knowledge for them it would be in terms of perception inference testimony and we will see tomorrow what these are and how to understand these schools and how do they debate like for example jainism buddhism yoga sankhya bhagavad gita mahabharat charvak all those things would be falling under the category of eastern schools and we will have to see similarly what is the criteria for determining the truth we are talking about that yes there is this reality in the objective world which is external and we say that i need to have some kind of a knowledge and this knowledge is due to the true knowledge however the question arises how do you understand this truth so they say this is there are three schools of truth that we have got one is the correspondence theory of truth the second one is coherence theory of truth and the third one is what you call it as the pragmatic theory of truth so tomorrow i'll be giving you a glimpse i will not be entering into the details about varieties of correspondence theories of truth or coherence truth or the pragmatic i'll be giving you a general outlook about how the theories look like next comes ethics and we all know what ethics stands for it is nothing but the way you are going to talk about what is good what is evil what is right what is wrong what is virtue what is vice for example in leadership studies you come and say that yes we have got so many varieties of leaders like autocracy is there then you have got technical uh, leadership then someone hedonistic kind of a leadership you can classify and you can give me as many numbers of as leaders are present in this world okay at that time now the question arises out here okay is this leader good or is this leader evil is this leader right is this leader wrong is this what you call it that yes the leader is justice now i'm just giving you an over picture over there now you can imagine you are working as a manager in a company so what happens you have a team now the moment a team is there we all know that manager and the team has a lot of drifts one person can come and say that yes my manager is highly partial the other person can come and stand up and say oh my manager always exploits me i don't know what to say then there can be the other person who might say that yes my manager treats me as his family member only so here comes in the virtue the vices the justice etc 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 what kind of a justice is being done now for example i when i was working as a senior manager in a bpo industry of genpak and now it is called as genpak when i was working it was called as ge now whenever you know the time of appraisals are there i used to have a difficult time reason hr used to tell me ki okay in your team ramani you know as to who is the best person who has performed very well and who is the worst kind of a person now without anything you have to recognize this person and give away no matter whether he has performed in a crooked manner 
the person who has worked hard was regular into the company is a very hard working person and he went in his honest way therefore he was not able to achieve his targets so does that mean that when i'm giving him the appraisal i will neglect all these things and i will say ki, okay you have not performed because my company is known for performance based so you have not performed therefore i cannot give you the appraisal what will happen he will suffer and he will have a negative attitude towards the manager or oh, she is highly partial i worked hard so much and in such a honest manner she did not appraise me and she did not appreciate it also whereas the other person he will feel very happy oh i have done wrong however i'm good in the sake eyes of the company so the appraisals are very good and this person is feeling very happy now i used to have this kind of a dilemmas always as to what we are supposed to do when we are in these kind of situations so there comes in the picture of ethics and we need to study from that particular angle therefore here you will see that the central questions are what is the nature of the life of the excellence in the sense that there are four leaders let's say mahatma gandhi uh, hitler then i have got musloni then i have got abraham lincoln nelson mandela and nehru if i have to study how should i treat these leaders and which one of them is the best one if i look at nazism which is being taken care by hitler his society was built upon saying that there should not be even a single person who is handicapped if they see any handicapped kind of a person go and shoot him if the person is a jew the jew should not exist in his society shoot him on the spot if he reiterates it and we know the world is i mean we have seen so much of destruction then he says that if the person is not handsome if the person is old throw him out kill him put him into that gases a uh, chambers where you know due to if you cannot kill due to the gas he may die so you know uh, if you study hitler looking at his movies and the books very carefully the kind of narcissism that he was trying to say is that make a clean city or a make a clear this thing where no old age no deceased person no handicapped person no ugly looking person all those things have been taken away so do you like that kind of a society is what they are looking for so is that the excellence that we looking for or should we look at mahatma gandhi and see the way he did it did it in the sense he fought he applied ahimsa ways and all those things do you think that those are the qualities of excellence so it up to us how do you we deal with these kind of questions and proceed further what is the ultimate worth of the goals you see when we are talking about the goals what are we talking about we are talking about again another dichotomy which is called as means and ends is this the right means for me to achieve the kind of goal that i'm looking for in the end or is this the end through which i can reach to this mean you see so that becomes one kind of a problem for me second problem is when we are talking about you know which is more important for me my principles or my targets my uh, goals are what are important what is the ultimate worth of those goals like uh, we pick up from bhagavad gita and entire hr is talking about that that uh, krishna is a very good leader and the kind my paper was selected as a best paper and it got published in one of the peer review uh, journal also wherein the uh, krishna always as a action uh, leader he wants to see the instant results in arjun arjun was in that way very lethargic and he took some time to understand what lord krishna was trying to tell him so the ultimate worth of that goals 
has to be understood when we are talking about the actual research out here what specific courses of conduct in keeping these goals as i said should i be using um, crooked ways to achieve my goals or should i have to be very honest in our working hard and then go ahead and get receive my goals so you know these are certain i'm not given a, a long list of the problems however i have that worksheet with me which i can go ahead collect those uh, i can share all the kind of questions that are pertaining to all of these uh, words that i'm talking about now in the earlier um, session there was so much of debate on socialism as to what kind of social philosophy are we talking about we are talking about the human society because we are living in a society therefore i have to focus upon the various activities of human beings for example in some countries they say that abortion is bad in some countries they say you know let her it's up to the mother whether she wants the child or not let her go ahead and abort there are countries which say that maternity leaves we are giving away what about paternal um, uh, conditions only the mother is responsible for the child what about the father so should father also spend some time with his child that's another question that we are talking about on one side leadership has announced certain laws for the benefit of farmers however here comes the leadership here comes the farmers farmers refuse to listen to the new laws that are being implemented so we had this kind of a drift in the society so you can look into the society around us and see whether are we uh, at least coming to see any changes over there or any actual activities which are being done and you are not able to capture the spectrum into the reality so here we come across with certain problems like what social progress do you think that india is socially progressing uh, but still on one hand we say that yes we are socially progressing on the other side we are still seeing the gap between rich and poor we are still able to see the gap between what you call it as the aged and the young one the differences between the importance of being a man and the gender issues the women the exploitation that we see however there was recently uh, one of our um, colleges you know they went over and they were trying to understand the exploitations present in the one i saw one of the girl to get up and tell me that ma'am i have a friend who is not able to come out because he was raped now i got a shock of my life i have heard about the rape of a woman but rape of a man is also taking place in the society so here when we are talking about are we talking about inequalities or are we talking about injustices and now not only for human beings that rapes are there we have gone ahead and we have included even animals also side by side and that becomes much more shocking news for me now can you see how the problems are arising in this world and what kind of things are taking place out here also side by side so we can see a lot of things coming in the form of social crimes juvenile uh, delinquency child labor honor killing gender differentiation injustice inequality then even at uh, you go to hospitals now people during corona when they died in the hospital what did the hospitals do they covered their bodies with the blue color sheet and it was taken directly to the burial ground or the graveyard where they are supposed to uh, get rid of this bodies as soon as possible now even the family members uh, you know especially hindus i i, I mean to say all the religions that it go in that manner i have heard them coming and saying ki oh maine to uska shakal bhi nahi dekha tha aur uski to antim sanskar bhi kar diya gaya tha doctors were even apprehensive to even share the bones of that individual saying that even the bones carry those germs and we don't want the so, uh, society to be polluted 
Now that is again another kind of uh, you know things that we have to look in medical department as to what exactly is happening. One person commented that no, no, they have removed the body from the kidneys and liver. Bhi hata diya tha. और उसको कहीं और सेल कर देंगे और बॉडी को इसलिए आपको नहीं दिखा रहे आई मीन दिस वाज अ बिग रूमर व्हिच वाज प्रेजेंट इन द सोसाइटी सो व्हाट शुड वी डू एज ह्यूमन बीइंग्स टू अंडरस्टैंड सच अ प्रॉब्लम नाउ नेक्स्ट यू विल सी द सोशल वैल्यूज कॉमन गुड दैट दे वर टेकिंग केयर इन द सोसाइटी लाइक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ फ्री फूड नाउ आई हैव सीन इंडिविजुअल्स कमिंग एंड टेकिंग द इनिशिएटिव सेइंग दैट anybody in whose house there are people are positive cases you can let us know we will be providing free food fine that's a very good cause not only free food for the corona patient they were giving the food for the animals for birds and they were taking care around the entire environment happiness now there are schools of utilitarianism whose maxim is what do they say maximum happiness for maximum number of people this is called as utilitarianism irrespective that i'm not taking up different kinds of utilitarian schools out here so here this is the maxim given by js stuart mill however when you see big data people they say that we are not concerned about these maximum people we are concerned to find out if we have these scenarios minimum happiness for maximum number of people minimum happiness for minimum number of people maximum happiness for minimum people so they say that in these scenarios what is going to happen so that is another happiness that we are talking about look at the works written by uh, these economists who are there you know and the way they have talked about and they are discussing that how the society should like what kind of economic conditions should be taken care of etc 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 we talk about international security national international security national security personal security now there are so many levels of the security also however now i have seen a family which came up and they asked me this question ma'am this is a family of four children three daughters and one son i said okay fine father was highly abusive totally alcoholic abusive in the sense that he used to be even it took the violence against his wife now what happened the children who were here you know somehow got started revolting their father and they supported their mother who suffered a lot in their lives now what happened out here they were starting taking care of their mother and mother sometimes with one daughter then the second daughter third daughter fourth daughter father has to be asked okay you can go and you will live on your own now when he has turned out to be a old person living in a senior citizen home he approached the children now we have to understand over there that will the children accept him and take care of him so one daughter said why not he is in a old age so it is our duty irrespective of the fact that he was so bad to us we should be able to take care of him that was the responsible of one daughter other daughter said i have to take care of myself when i am not able to take care of myself how can i take care of him so please forgive me you will see that in the society these kind of things are taking place at that time how do you understand it is it the individual security the family security or is it that the entire society has to be included into it justice is the same thing freedom whose freedom are we talking about is it the freedom of the individual is it the freedom of the children do we give so much of the freedom go to america if the child in any form every month you know uh, when wherever the children are there uh, in some way or the other manner the inspectors visit their house either their house or the neighbor's house to find out whether the children are being suffered or they are happily being taken care of and if by chance 
the child says no i'm being harmed by my mother or by my father then that this thing is gone totally they take away the child from the parents and they say okay, okay you do whatever because the child has complained against you now imagine what will happen if a similar kind of things are taking place in india i hope all of you remember the case wherein um, uh, you know this person one of the person from mumbai he went across and he lodged a case against his own parents saying that who are they who gave them the right to give birth to me no i got a shock of my life when i read this news i said how can he even file a case according to him the parents must have taken his approval before giving birth to him now you tell me how is that possible now the court was also the case was there and it was fought the person uh, you know really went against his parents so imagine what, what kind of a situation it could have been i was just thinking about that now similarly excellence beauty punctuality discipline these are some of the things that you find out in our society as this one aesthetics what is aesthetics it is nothing but the study of the beauty if it is the study of the beauty then what exactly are how are you going to deal with these kind of questions what is beauty what is beautiful to a person may not be very beautiful to the other person take the case of a mother mother you know tells no matter how ugly the child is my child will always appear beautiful to me maybe the society might perceive him as an ugly one for me the child is always beautiful the relationship between the beautiful to the true and good then we have got what you call it as the criteria by which you know we are going to judge a piece of art around us in a truly objective sense you know when you are looking now i, I hope uh, you remember that song that i was talking about when akshay khanna and ravina tandon's movie i forgot the name of that movie however there was this song you know to cheej badi hai mast mast the entire feminist you know they have to get up and say that the song is a worst kind of a song and this should be deleted from the picture now opposite to that i have mahesh babu's picture which was very recently released sariledu ni kevaru in which there is a song called as mind block mind block mind block now when i heard it i got a shock of my life that yes it is not just the female whose body was trying to be appreciated including the male body was also being uh, including the dresses the man says i really like you wearing this kind of a sari and a blouse and coming in front of me so the lady say uh, till now he was uh, trying to wear only trousers and shirt now i see him wearing a lungi and a jabla now if you hear the entire song you will understand you know what is that objectivity and what is the objectivity and the subjectivity which is taking place out here you know more and more then what is the art in itself how do you uh, take it now what is the reproduction of a vision into ultimate reality that a piece of a painting is in front of you how do you perceive it is it the same now for example a given company the company is very beautiful for me to others and everybody however when you take the interview she will give you different reasons this person will give you a different reason this person may be a different reason i don't know that's one thing and then comes what you call it as the appreciation of the beauty that is taking place around us how do you understand even this one also so coming to the domain of logic i was talking about so much and i uh, so one of the scholars uh, in fact three of them they requested me ma'am can you please at least introduce what exactly do we mean by logic and what is taking place out here it is nothing however it is a system or the principles of reasoning applicable to any branch of knowledge or study 
Now that was called as a logic. Okay, if that is the one, this was talking about various forms of reasoning. The reasoning which one child will be giving to us will be very different to the uh, reasoning which is being given by another child. So one has to literally understand how do we go ahead and uh, you know understand this kind of reasoning which is taking place. Now, in the same manner, uh, you know, some of us, we will say it is not just the uh, human reasoning that we should be taking into the consideration. We should even consider animals. Elephant, the way the elephant uses the logic is very different from the way the ant uses or the snake uses or the monkey uses. I, I mean, you can, a tiger, lion, you name it, including the small uh, insect like mosquito. So they say that there are various forms of reasoning. It's only that you need to come up with some kind of a conclusion. Therefore, they say on one side, you have got the animal world. Okay. However, animals, can they think about truth? Can they think about knowledge? Do they have knowledge? And so what is their objective of the reality? In that sense, I'm talking about the animals. We have seen an experiment which uh, Andy Field gives it again in his book. What does he say? He says that I have a television, okay, and in this television there is this net um, a cartoon strip that is continuously being being played. What is that? Fishes moving from one corner of the screen to the other corner of the screen. Now, we should remember that Andy Field is a psychologist. He has a pet dog as well as a pet cat. And he says the cat is looking only at the movement of these fishes. Sitting and it is watching continuously. So can we say that, yes, there is this kind of a knowledge that particular animal is gaining? Or should we go ahead and demarcate and say that, okay, animals still here can reason. After this, it is only the human beings who can go for the higher reasoning. And there are so many thinkers who are coming. Now, what about Goodall? Goodall says, I find monkeys to be highly intelligent as compared to the other human beings. Then the question arises, which I was telling to you. If you go ahead and conduct a survey, sentences are there for you. However, did you convert those sentences into statements? Try to understand whether you have removed those anomalies, fallacies, paradoxes, dilemmas, everything. Did you construct the arguments to showcase for and against and then come to the world of truth? so that you are near the knowledge and near the knowledge means the objective of the external reality has been identified by you. Have you done these things? Now think about it. Then th this is exactly what we do and then they are asking us to go ahead and talk about them, basically. So here we talk about consistency. Now supposing one of you will say, uh, you know, okay, Ramini is coming to your house and she will consume both tea and coffee. Now, the moment your wife or your mother hears this sentence, they will say, are you okay? How can she drink both tea and coffee at the same time? This is what you call it as paradoxical statement. Mama, I don't know. All you will tell your wife, I don't know. She might take tea or coffee. So your wife or your mother will say, what will happen if she does not take tea or coffee? Then what? What are you going to offer her? This is called as dilemma. So you see, when you are reading the papers and each and everything, these kind of things also must be there. And that's what he says you have to be able to understand. Consistency means... 
in their argument throughout their argument there was nothing wrong if they have said we have done it here that means throughout the phase of their experimentation they were just focusing only and only about corona however by any chance they say that no we are including even the uh, patient suffering from viral fever you say excuse me how can you do this you are demarcating so this is called as contradiction creating contradictories or not being consistent here it is inconsistent contradictory means you are looking exclusively for the corona patients the study however the way that you are approaching is looking at the jaundice patient you are contradicting you are not consistent in your approach validity now validity is very difficult because you need to achieve true in all the situations even if there is one false situation then it is not a valid system at all you are gone completely so next is completeness which means that if a theorem is true out here then it should be proven if you have proved it that means it is a complete one soundness what does this mean premises are true and the argument is also true however if my premises are the false ones for example can i talk and say that yes i'm talking about the houses and being constructed in mars and i'm studying about the houses in on earth you will say ramni the argument that you have made is fine however they are not true because my premises are talking about the houses houses in mars and houses on earth the difficulty arises and the argument tends to fall off completely so these are certain things that i really wanted to introduce to all of you as the technical jargons in my in our system and i think maximum of it we are able to understand and see though these are not the only terminologies that we need to encounter there are some more which maybe later on i would be able to do now uh, comes in how to understand now this is the most important part of our understanding and that is what you call it as the research philosophies now the main thing that we have to talk about before i can enter into the zone of what i call it as the uh, qualitative research now what are these philosophies that we are talking about let us understand them now i'll be giving you a lot of papers on this there are a lot of things that are present and we can go ahead and we can understand more and more since here majority of us belong to the school of business so i'm introducing the schools which are pertaining to these a particular study basically and here you will see that one school is called as the pragmatism second school you will see is called as positivist third one is what you call it as realism and fourth one here you have got is interpretivism and we will have to understand and find out what are these schools are finally before and this kind of a thing i have already showcased to you made you understand about what kind of an onion is there and how the things are taking place out here one now if we come to these schools now they most probably i mean i'm going to focus only on these four main research philosophies as of now later on or maybe uh, tomorrow or in another workshop i might introduce more of such philosophies which are there i can give you the uh, simple uh, introduction to it as of now today and tomorrow however i will not be entering into the depth part of it now come how do you choose which i was telling to you that yes one needs to go ahead and make the choices from those are uh, well i have given to you the dichotomies then between quantitative and what i call it as the qualitative and secondly the data collection methods dcm now depending upon these things 
you're going to be choosing and making your uh, research completely thorough part of it. And that's how you're going to design it also. Now, when I'm talking about pragmatism, now don't worry about the meaning of these schools. This I'll be giving to you all tomorrow. And more I'll be giving it. Right now, we will just see what they are talking about and what do we require it. Pragmatist says that the popular data collection method is either by mixed or multiple things you can do it. Okay, method designs, which I will be showing it to you later on, either by quantitative or by qualitative, you can go ahead and you can do the research. However, when we come to positivism, they say that we are highly structured, okay, then we require large samples and that's why the bootstrapping concept comes into the picture. Measurement level is quantitative, however, Sometimes we can even go ahead and use the qualitative also. Where we can use qualitative under positivism is something which I'll be doing it tomorrow for each one of us. When I'm talking about realism, methods chosen must fit the subject matter. The subject that you're going to take care of it, whether it is qualitative or quantitative, I'm not interested. It should fit in with the subject that you are going to study. If it is not, then you cannot talk about the real the realism at all. Next comes what you call it as interpretivism. Here they're talking that, yes, go ahead. In this case, I want large samples in positivism. In interpretivism, it has to go for small samples and in depth is necessary. Here, large sample, but I'm not going to focus on the in-depth part of it. Investigations, qualitative method can fit in into the interpretivism. Remember that. These are the basic things about our research. Next, again, what are the main research philosophies? You have got axiology, phenomenology, interpretivism, realism, epistemology, ontology, positivism, and pragmatism. This I introduced even in my uh, orientation class. However, now also I'm using uh, it, uh, introducing to you. However, more in depth of it, I'll be taking up tomorrow also and then make you understand. What is axiology? It is nothing but that branch which studies judgments about the value. When they say that, yes, this value is very good, I'm uncertain about it. No, it is very bad. All those things when you are talking about, we will have to understand how valuable that particular judgment is and how it is going to play. For example, in my childhood, if somebody from my family commented, oh, Ramni is very ugly looking person. I could not have even revolted. I could not have said anything. I could have accepted it. And I could say, yes, I'm an ugly looking girl. However, when I grow up and I've been introduced or trained for my leadership qualities, if somebody says, oh, how ugly she is, does that matter to me? No, it does not matter to me here because I'm now a professional person. It's totally up to you. How do you see me? If I'm wearing a trouser, I might look very beautiful to you. If I'm wearing a sari, it's a different scenario altogether. So we will have to see the perspective and the area that we are looking into. And then we carry forward out here. This only talks about the aims of the research. What do you mean by that? It is you are trying to explain or predict the world or you, are you only seeking to understand it? So, you know, if you are a very sensitive kind of a person, you are looking into all these things in a very, very different manner. And then go ahead and proceed further with your research. Like, for example, uh, if I have axiology as a school and... I belong to a positivistic kind of an atmosphere. How do I take it? 
research is undertaken in a value free way the researcher is independent from the data and maintains the objective stance what does this mean now it's very clear researcher means subject is independent from the data that is coming from the object that means what it means that it is the object is trying to give the data however is the subject able to take it that is what they are talking about therefore it is highly structured large samples measurements are required quantitative and sometimes it can be qualitative also side by side however now i come from a realist school what does the realist school say it is value laden no matter whether you see it or don't see it it is still existing the researcher is biased by the world views what do you mean by world views there are so many subjects and every subject is coming out with a different um i should say reality however you are giving respect to all these realities and say okay let it take care and here we have cultural experiences upbringings are all present over you are not able to go against it methods chosen must be fit into the subject matter and it can be both quantitative and qualitative that means positivism is going to help you out and say okay i'm fine with your qualitative study and your quantitative study realism also quantitative and qualitative also however when you come to interpretivism research is value bound the researcher is part of what is being researched that means here is the object here is the subject both of them are interplaying with each other they cannot be subject separated out therefore so it will be highly subjective by nature when i say this thing is taking place this is taking place in terms of the subject only so here you will say that the main concern is objective for us therefore small samples in depth investigation it is qualitative study however when i come to the pragmatism what is happening out here values play a large role in interpreting the results and that's why you will see that in quantitative studies interpretation of that data is necessary the researcher adopting both objective and subjective points of view that means how the subject is looking at the reality and secondly how the objective is revealing itself both of them are compulsory in this kind of a search and what is that in terms of the axiology now comes epistemology which i have already given to you the importance of it and what we are trying to do however what is important for me one is the intuitive knowledge about the business research that we are doing it second is the authoritative knowledge that i am taking from whom from books from research papers experts supreme powers etc the logical knowledge which i am taking up it is due to the application of the logical reasoning and that's why they are called as sources of knowledge in business research then comes empirical knowledge which relies on the objective facts that means what is the object and what is the truth about these object in itself that have been established and can be demonstrated established means it is the subject who is going to study the object number 1 and established means it cross checked also from the other way round and then demonstrated it that see this is my reality basically so here we go ahead into the research process to understand what exactly the epistemic knowledge is going to give us is it more about the authoritative knowledge or is it more about the empirical knowledge that i'm looking for so here the differences are coming in it includes essentialism which i'll be explaining tomorrow historical perspective perennialism 
progressivism, empiricism, idealism, rationalism. Now, I don't know how many varieties of isms are there for us. We will have to see all these things also side by side. So empiricism and rationalism as the two major constructing debates occur always. And that's why on one side you have positivism. On the other hand, you have critical realism coming into the picture. And we will have to look into it. Empiricism says that personal experiences, which I showed you yesterday, the sensory or the noumena level is really important and associated with observation, feeling, senses, and it is a valid source of knowledge for empiricists. Whereas if I talk about the rationalism, here we are talking about empirical findings gained through valid and reliable measures of as a source of knowledge. And that is through logical tools, basically. We don't just go ahead and say, okay, okay, we are fine with that. No, I have to understand even this part. Therefore, here when epistemology is there, I'm going very slowly here to make you understand that research philosophy that is being taken care of is pragmatism. So what is your epistemology out here? It says either or both observable phenomena and subjective meanings can provide acceptable knowledge depending upon the research question. Number one. Number two, focus on the practical applied research integrating different perspectives to help to interpret that particular data that is present over there. Therefore, positivists, when they are coming across, they would say only observable phenomena. Now, you should be able to look at those dichotomies that I was talking about can provide credible data or the facts. And Focus on causality, law-like generalization, reducing phenomena to simplest of what you call it as the elements over there. Then you have got next school comes what you call it as the realist school. What do they say? Here they say that observable phenomena provide credible data facts for you. Insufficient data, if it is there, it means inaccuracies are there in cessation, that is your direct realism. Alternatively, we can say phenomena create sensations which are open to misinterpretation, and that is your critical realism. Now, I don't know. How many of you are able to understand at this time of the hour? So you have to know that, yes, these things are taking place. And that is the reason for me talking about those dichotomies were really necessary. It focuses on explaining within context or the context. So there is the subject, there is this object which is there. However, we need to understand the context in which these two are existing and then go further into the investigation. Similarly, if you come to interpretivism, the next one, here you will see that they are talking about subjective meanings on one side. On the other side, you have got what you call it as the social phenomena. Okay, so focus upon the details about the situation or the reality behind these details, subjective meaning, motivating action. So here it is not just the setup that they're talking about. They're saying that look at the various things that are available for you. And that is where the interpretivism is coming into the picture. And we give importance to the subjective meanings along with the social phenomena that is existing over there. Without that, interpretivism is completely a useless project for me otherwise. Okay. Next one is constructivism. Now, here, what does Davis Elkind, I would like to quote, unquote, 
constructivism is the recognition of the reality is a product of human intelligence interacting with experience in the real world as soon as you include human mental activity in the process of knowing reality you have accepted what you call it as constructivism that means here is the objective reality on one hand subject is there on the other hand however between these two things there is something called as human intelligence that is taking place in terms of the mental activity so that kind of mediation is there out here if i'm using it and then the subject is able to see the reality and that is only due to the uh, appropriate mental activity that is taking place if it is not that this mental activity that means the constructivism is not taking place at all okay now here under the main distinction between the constructivism and positivism is what they say that positivist or use that knowledge is generated in the scientific method whereas constructivist would say that knowledge is constructed by scientists and it opposes the idea that there is single methodology to generate the knowledge that means there is no single reality it has to be multiple in nature in constructivism in positivism it's exactly one kind of reality that they are talking about out here so what are the different kinds of constructivism we have got we have got phenomenological constructivism biological constructivism then we have got cognitive constructivism and what you call it as radical constructivism under this thing also phenomenological there are 10 varieties of phenomenological things that are available biological interpretations are five varieties of it which i'm not entering in this workshop at all i would be taking it up in my next level of uh, workshop right now it is only this much only that i would be focusing on then comes what you call it as cognitive constructivism now there are again five or six varieties of them like freud is there carl jung is there no similarly psychoanalytic uh, schools are there so you know you have got those cognitive chomsky and school so you know one has to look at those schools and try to understand what they are talking about last but not the least you have radical constructivism for which there are five exactly the schools which are present for us so right now again i'm not entering into all these kind of jargon uh, just uh, making you understand phenomenological thing biological cognitive and radical constructivism next here is the entire thing that we need to understand as to uh, you know what are i'm now i'm coming slowly i'm jumping into the realm of the qualitative part so that we understand where the qualitative is coming in in what manner qualitative quantitative would be coming in and where we can jump into the mixed part so this i would be coming in again however i will not touch right now this part of it we will be checking the next school is interpretivism now we need to understand what exactly is happening when we say interpretive it means that you are going to interpret the elements of the study and therefore we say interpretivism integrates human interest into the study the, in the sense that why do you want to study basically interpret you are interpreting it this interpretation comes due to the social constructions like what language consciousness shared meanings and the instruments that you are going to take up completely you know and therefore whenever we talk about language we have narrative analysis discourse analysis structural analysis then elemental analysis which all have to do with your language textual analysis networked analysis you know those things would be coming in when you are talking about the consciousness you are talking about the mind 
so what is happening at this level so how are you going to interpret when you are at the level of the consciousness same is the case with the shared meanings for example if i write the word uh, let's say uh, object now each one of you who is in this session right now with me are you able to understand the meaning of object as i understand the meaning of the object or are they different from each other and that is the way we need to understand about the shared meaning and comes the instruments so here again there are different kinds of philosophies that we talk about and we will be seeing how differences would be arising for us later on after i complete with uh, i should say the literature review topic and then i will be entering into the different kinds of interpretivism and how there are diverse approaches like for example social constructivism or uh, different kinds of phenomenology then we have got the hermeneutics all those things would be coming in to me for basically so here are the important things that we need to understand that if we are taking up interpretivist approach the best is through interviews and what you call it as the observations basically sometimes i can take the direct data sometimes i can work with the secondary data also side by side so one has to see what kind of things we are going to interpret for ourselves when i am talking about this particular school then comes the variations variations will take place because i told you that a uh, positivism there are 10 schools okay Her, uh, phenomenology again there are 10 schools are there so you know you need to look at those variations also side by side and i uh, may try to understand that yes i am trying to uh, adopt this kind of school for my research because it fits into very well into my stream of thinking whatever it is so phenomenology that turns out to be a philosophical tradition that allows you to seek to understand the world through directly experiencing the phenomena that means like i told you in my first day only when my mother was watching that movie mumbai something was happening in her mind so this is the reality that she is looking at it however there is some other phenomena also that is taking place in her mind because she is the subject so directly uh, she is experiencing and therefore i saw her crying out there so you can see how complicated the situation is however that's how the phenomenological uh, individuals would be understanding the entire system over there so we will be seeing this kind of a stuff also side by side into the variation approaches there are a lot of them which i'll have to discuss after some time for example are you at the relativist ontological thing now this is something that i will explain tomorrow um i don't want to enter into the entire jargon before explaining to you further schools which are there and tomorrow uh, from 9 to 11 when you join me up i would be taking care about them also side by side and then we can uh, focus upon it for example what is the nature of reality for positivist and interpretivist what are the goals of the research when i am talking about these differences so tomorrow again when i'll be uh, looking into these papers which i have already been shared with you you can go ahead and you can understand them more and more so we will see what these are and how to use the interpretivism in business studies uh, as opposed to the uh, positivist schools and then we will look into the meanings of sub i have already done however uh, you know how is it that objectivism is being understood in different schools that again we will have to touch upon if i do it today only it would be too much for us so i'm not entering as of now so there is so much to do for us and we think 
I will be taking care maybe tomorrow and I'll be able to complete with you. Teacher. So once I complete it, then you will be able to know that yes, what the epistemological, this complete picture will be given to you more and more. So we will understand how to carry forward with these ones and then come to your understanding of that. So I think I will stop here today. I will not be going more than that because if I enter also, it will not be able to understandable uh, to each one of us. So, you know, let me stop till here for all of you. Tomorrow, uh, so all of you have agreed that yes, you will be joining me up exactly at nine o'clock. And it is with that that I have to disturb that particular uh, time, you know, from eight to 10. So all of you can be there from uh, 9 to 11. And I'll be repeating uh, some portion of it and then going ahead with the further part of it. Or if tomorrow is Sunday, some of you can join me up at 12.30 because I'll be uh, starting off with a new topic uh, wherein we will be looking at different schools, not only these schools, However, uh, you know, what exactly do we mean by dualist? Uh, what exactly do we mean by critical realist? Who are logical positivists? All those things would be coming in. So tomorrow, uh, I have requested majority of them to join me up at 12.30 so that if I complete that portion in the evening, then I can pick up with a new portion also side by side. Okay. So I think with that, let's close today's day. And uh, there are certain, oh, Abhishek, you have given me a lot of questions today. Um, okay, now here it is. Uh, Vidya Sagar, you have really, okay, that's fine. Tomorrow he will be there again. Abhishek is asking me, okay, he's fine. Uh, Sanjana, can we say plural, uh, pluralism as perception? Uh, Sanjana, tomorrow I would be, uh, uh, as I said, differentiating between different schools which falls under Western uh, society as well as the Indian. And when I do that, after that, I want to find, uh, let share it with you, what are the various sources of knowledge in Western um, uh, world? And when we come to the Eastern world, you know, what are the sources of knowledge? The way that you are asking me, perception is taken as a one source of knowledge. Now, if you are looking at pluralism and then uh, saying that as perception, I will be explaining to you tomorrow. As different people see same thing in different manner. Yes, you're absolutely right. However, I cannot use the word perception. It would only be seeing. At the time of seeing, pluralist would say that each one of us see the objective in a different manner. So the patterns, which I'll be explaining to you what these patterns are and how the patterns are taking place tomorrow. So please do not miss your uh, session tomorrow because uh, repeating it again will become very difficult because Monday I'm planning to start off with systematic literature review for ourselves. So Abhishek is asking me, so Sanjana, just wait till tomorrow for some more time. Um, Abhishek is asking me, so ethical study can be done on an individual or a group of people? Yes, you can do it and you can even um, make it as an applied study on any policy or a regulation also. Applied ethics has a different topics altogether. That also I will be showcasing to you, Abhishek. That also will be done. Farmer law can be part of the ethics. Yes, we talk about a lot in terms of utilitarianism whether are we talking about the utilitarian happiness for the farmers or is it for the government if it is for the government is it a selfish happiness so if it is a selfish happiness then what kind of ethics is it is it a selfish ethics that we are talking about so there are quite a lot of things that we discuss over there you can highlight some philosophy for social sciences also okay in social sciences, I was giving you so many examples. Um, however, um, I can pick up some more. And tomorrow, when I'm going to touch again 
on this one i would be uh, taking care about it also side by side now at uh, sanjina has already given her attendance so all of you also can mark your attendance so that i can it is recorded officially also side by side mazia you can give your uh, attendance also shobit your attendance i'm looking for mazia has done buddha day if you are that you can do it and mayank sir you have done it already so mayank now are you able to understand why uh, these basics of research have to be introduced before i can enter into the qualitative study also yes ma'am okay so i hope mm. one of you now understand what is the difference uh, kind of a workshop this is uh, is being presented out unlike the other uh qualitative research uh, uh workshops that are ma'am just i want to ask you one thing what is the action research action research um okay can you wait till tomorrow yeah ma'am no problem okay because i would be speaking a lot about the action research wherein um uh, okay just wait till tomorrow you would be uh, understanding it in a far better manner rather than mm -hmm. me explaining to you in just three or four sentences okay ma'am okay Thank i'll you. be taking Thank care you. of it also so join me up if you can join up uh, in the morning around 12:30 otherwise in the evening we will see uh, all of us will be meeting around 9:00 in the evening i will okay. try ma'am if i don't have got the cl class I'm